Hi guys, <laughs> I'm back. Hey look, I've got to give an update on what's been happening with that Arizonian cowboy, right? It's been coming up here three o'clock in the morning at the witching hour, right? On his motorbike, 1952, Harley Davidson fully restored and worming his way into my good graces, right? Well, anyway, he turned up again last night, right, and I, I didn't hear him coming. Never heard a thing until he was knocked on the window, you know. I looked out and I said, I didn't hear your bike. He said, oh, no, <laughs> it's broken down. I said, well, how did you get here? He said, oh, could have lift the milk truck. I thought, yeah, that'd be right. That'd be the only car out and about here on the mountain at three o'clock in the morning, wouldn't it, you know. <laughs> so I said... What have you done with your bike? He said, oh, milk truck, you know, put it in the back for me and dropped it off at the garage. I'll pick it up there tomorrow. I said, what, you're going to be here all day tomorrow? He said, well, if you don't mind. He said, uh, you know, I've, I'll go down and pick up the bike later. You know, I said, I don't know what's happened to it, but he said, just parked it halfway up the mountain. I said, Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But you never know with this guy if he's bullshitting you or not, you know. Whether his bike actually really did break down or he just stopped it, got off, you know, hitched a lift with the milk truck and came on up here, so you know, I mean you gotta watch this guy. He's very bloody crafty, right? Anyway, so I let him in right and as usual he gets over his side. And, he, you know, he started to make himself like as at home, you know. He hung his cowboy hat up on the hook uh, that I've got there on that side of the bed up in the window. He just hangs his cowboy hat up there like as if he has a bloody place, you know. But then I noticed he didn't look really happy. And I said, oh, are you upset about your bike breaking to you? He said, no, 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 it's not that. No. It's just, um, I said, well, what is it then? He said, oh. Well, the cactus business in Arizona, it's not going too well at the moment, you know. I said, well, well, well why not? He said, oh, well, the fertiliser, the costs of fertiliser have gone through the roof. Can't get the fertiliser cheap like we used to be able to, you know. He said, and um, yeah, that means, you know, that uh, for a commercially producing cacti operation uh, the profits are not not the same and I said oh yeah yeah well, I can understand that I said I can I can well relate to that and uh, you know I said you know if you're not getting the fertiliser you know like from reclaim like you used to get it well you know you're going to have to make your own compost heap aren't you I mean look I'm no businesswoman I said but I do have exhaustive experience in the field of the manufacture packaging and sale of cakes for the school fate i was their convener for several years and i've got to tell you that when i told them i said to him when i told them that i was leaving this post and i was passing it on to somebody else i'm not kidding you but the whole boardroom cried they all just sat there and wept into their cups of tea because they said, we can't do without you, Pamela. And I said, well, look, it's not like I'm leaving you in the lurch. I'll train Gay Delling. Well, she was a friend of mine, right? Well, I'll tell you about her later. But anyway, she really stuffed things up. But look, anyway, um, I just want to, well, the name's enough, isn't it? But anyway, look, I think we won't go there. But anyway, um, so I, uh, I said to him, look, I had this problem once with the eggs. I said the eggs went from $4 a dozen to $6 a dozen just overnight. Just like that. And, you know, I searched all over the mountain. I tried to get an alternative supply, you know, that was at the old price. <laughs> no, nobody was going to sell me eggs at the old price, were they? Not when they'd gone up. $2 a dozen, see? So I had no choice, really. I had to get myself some chickens. I had to supply the eggs, you see? So that's what I said to this guy. I said, listen, you are going to have to start your own compost farm, right? 
You have to get your own worms in and all this sort of stuff. You have to provide your own fertiliser, right? Because you can't get it from your crane anymore. That's out. That's off the off the uh, table entirely. And so you're going to have to do that. And and I said, look, I had the same problem with the flower, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had the same problem with the flower. The flower, oh, the price went through the roof. And, and you know, and the thing is, when you're talking about eggs and flour and stuff, well, you don't need much flour in a sponge cake but you do need six eggs and six eggs is optimal right you don't want five eggs you don't want seven eggs you want six eggs and i said to him i think that's where you're falling down you've got to find what is the optimal amount of fertilizer right to put on each cactus tree well plant what whatever they call them you know and he said, yeah, yeah. I said, you don't want to give them more than they need. And you don't want to give them less either, but just the optimal amount, right? Once you find what that optimum is, I said, you're home and host. Anyway, getting back to about what happened with Gay Dell anymore, I trained her up, you know, taught her everything I knew. And anyway, one day the headmaster turned up with the cakes from the school I heard this second hand because you know I'd resigned by this time and he turned up and um he put them all out on this trestle it was a boiling hot day you know and all the cakes just melted in the heat anyway she came roaring down and she said Ron Terry she said you couldn't organize a bloody chalk raffle right I mean fancy speaking to the headmaster like you know, I never did that in all the years I was convening. I wouldn't dream of it, you know. But anyway, look, as I said, you can teach people business methods, but you can't teach them diplomacy. You, know, you can't do that. I mean, that's something that's innate in all of us, really, isn't it? I mean, I'm very diplomatic and I'm very kind. This guy that's been coming here, you know, I'm kind of starting to get used to him a bit now, but, well, you know... He's a bit in the way, and but you know, let, let's just not go there. But anyway, he's going on and on and on. I mean, he's got this. What's this buddy thing he's talking about? This trick of serious, trick of serious cacti. Um, and I said, What sounds like triceratops? Sounds like a bloody dinosaur's name. He said, Well, no, 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 that's just the name of cacti. And you know, and he's going on, he's got all these bloody cacti that he's got over there, the Easter cactus, the purple prickly pear cactus, the saguaro cactus, you know, it's a Mexican name obviously, golden barrel cactus, an organ pipe cactus and a cardon cactus. And he says, look, all of these are separate, you see, and but they all need different kinds of care. And I said, oh God, that makes it difficult, doesn't it? I said, how are you going to know? What's the optimal amount of fertiliser for each particular type of cacti? I could see his problem. I could. And I said, well, look, as I said, oh, I have given you a few pointers. Um, I, look, as I said, I, I, I'm no businesswoman, right? But I was in great demand as... The manufacturer, packager, and supply of cakes of all kinds, everything from your jam roly poly to your chocolate cake to your uh, three layer sponge, right? Big supplier of those to every fate and fundraise that we had on Tambourine Mountain, whether it was to get a new football for the kids, or a new soccer ball, or a cricket bat, or a whole new library. Didn't matter, didn't matter. You still needed your cake store, right? And the cake store was an integral part of the way of life on Tambourine Mountain. Like every weekend, people would turn up to the cake store. That's right. Indispensable. And and I said to him, well, that, I don't understand really, you know, about the cacti sort of business. I don't, is that an indispensable part of uh, Arizonian life? He said, oh, yes, it is. People couldn't do without their cactus. I said, oh, okay. 
Fair enough. Sounds like he's onto a good thing then. I said, you know, I wish you well. I wish you well. Uh, and, you know, and I said, you know, I hope you'll take home with you uh, some those few pointers I've given you. And he said, well, who said I'm going home? I said, well, you are, aren't you? You're going back. I said, hey, you, no wonder your business is going down. Hey, you're not there to run it. You, you, know, can't, you can't be over here in Australia hanging around the mountain, you know, knocking on my bloody window every night. You know, no wonder your, your cactus are going downhill and you're losing profits overseas. I said, you better get home pronto, man. You know, you better get home as quickly as your, as your horse will carry you or your motorbike or whatever it is you've got. You know, I mean, God. But anyway, I just thought I'd give you that little update. And, uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, I'll go now and... Uh,